Hi there, it's James for VFX Nomad, and here we're going to talk about volumes in Clarice and how to use them. So this will just be a quick little run through or spotlight. Now, first things first, let's just make a little folder. This is a default project. We're just going to call this volumes. Um, the most obvious place to start is going to be uh, in the program. So here we go. If you go to geometry and you go down here, you're going to have a few different things that you can use for volumes. So we'll just start with the box. <clears throat> Here's our thingy bob. Now we're going to open this. We'll open the material linker. Uh, sorry, material linker. There we go. And then we're just going to make a volume material. Let's go look at that. We will drop it up the box. And then if we want to look at it here through our progressive view, let's just look at our scene so we get a light. And that's kind of it. Um, I'm just going to make a quick environment light so that you can see this. All right, straightforward. Here you go. That's a box. And you can just go in here and manipulate it as you would expect. So if you were doing like a big city or something and you wanted it to fade off, you could totally use this. Now, I'm not a big fan of these boxes in Clarice because actually by the time that you scale them up really large, uh, you can't see it right now, but what tends to happen is you do see a line that goes across here. And it's really annoying because it'll be going across your whole sky or something like that. So um, here you are, but use with caution. It would be my advice. So uh, what's the next thing that we do? The next thing is we're going to make a box, but we're going to not do it out of Clarice. So here we go into Houdini. Okay, so in Houdini, the first thing we're going to do is create a box. There we go. We're going to dive into the box. We're going to say um, VDB from polygons, I think it's called. VDB from polygons. There we go. We're going to drop that down. Hello box, become VDB. And then we're going to export that. File, export, down we go. Let's go, so there we go. Oh, and we just need to remember to change it from a surface to a fog volume. There we go. And I'm gonna choose somewhere to put this. I'll just overwrite this guy. And then we're going to write it, look at it, and then read it. All right, there you go. Wonderful box. So you can go up here and do whatever you want to it, but I'm just going to skip over that for the sake of this demo. So here we're going to go file, import volume, and go to the right place. Projects, spotlights. And there's our box that we just made. All right, I'm just going to disable the one that we had before. Here's our box. We're going to scale them up. All right, you see it looks sort of all dense and gross, um, but that is because we haven't put a material on him. And there we go. So what exactly is happening here? Now, when we do this, what's actually happening behind the scenes, or sort of for us, I should say, is that it is on the box itself. It's going down here and it's saying, it's looking for this. It's saying, what's the density property called? And it's, it's sort of a, a default, like a standard. So this already, if you look here, has a density attribute. <clears throat> and that's that's in essence what the difference is when this is reading in. It's, at first, it's just reading everything. And then we're saying, actually, just look at the density. And that is what we are applying this to here, which is why we have this density multiplier. Um, all right, so we're going to use that principle and we're going to make it a bit more complex. So volumes, clouds, whatever. Um, you're just going to do this. Now, what happens if you want to do something with multiple fields? So, in, for example, pyro. Uh, let's just go over here and do that then. We are going to turn this box off. All right, so we're going to make a sphere. We're going to dive in here, select the sphere, and then we are going to squish it down. There we go. It makes an edit node by default. And then maybe we just scale this up a little bit. So this is going to be our emitter. We're not really going to go into the what, where, and why. Go over here to the pyro shelf. And then for our example, we'll just hit flames. Now it's going to reset us to this. If we have a look inside here, we should. Sorry, I was on the wrong level. That's why that didn't work. So we're going to select the sphere. We're going to hit flames. It's going to think about it. And then it's going to give us this auto dot network. Um, I'm going to leave all of this alone. I'm just going to talk about two things. One is we have all these, well, let's just go to the end. So if we right click on this, 
you'll see here we have temperature density burn blah 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 and that's what this representation is over here we have all these different fields and it's showing us what they're all set to but the thing that we actually care about here is going to be having a look at what what are our guides actually using so if we go to the multi-field we can see that we're using density which is unsurprising but we're also using if we go over to emission emission is using temperature and so we have temperature and we have heat um, so we have this we have this ramp here and in essence what we're going to do is we're going to create the same thing in Clarice um, so what we need to do is in essence extract heat and we need to extract temperature all right how are we going to do that so first things first we need to take this simulation and bring it into uh, Clarice. So I'm gonna turn off this. We're gonna go over here. We're gonna say convert to VDB. Because what's happening right now is it's a sim and we need to change the sim into a VDB. There we go. And we're gonna say everything, please. Let's just make sure stuff's coming. There we go. So we still have density, temperature, heat, etc. And then we're just gonna write this out. Now you can do a file cache if you want to, sorry, I misspelled. You can do a file cache if you want to get everything. I'm just going to do a single frame. So I will let this simulate for a second. Now this all looks wrong. So let's look at this. This is what it should be looking like. All right. So this is, this is the kind of thing that we're going to aim for. All right, let this cook for a second. All right. Something like that frame will do. So here I'm going to select where we want it to go. We're going to set your flame dot VDB. All right. And we are going to write that. So let's go over here, have a look, switch it to read real quick. There we go. We get that ugly looking object back over here to Clarice. I'm going to disable this box. Right click new, or actually I find it easier to go file import, volume, flame. So this should just be that one frame that we did. Okay, it looks pretty gross, but you can see that it's imported. We're gonna grab our volume, we're gonna drop it on here. All right, that is our density. Now, if you remember our shaders uh, that we looked at real quick in Houdini had multiple fields. So that's what we're gonna need to do here. In this case, it's just looking for one field and we need something more complicated. So we are going to grab a volume shader, drop that down, and we are going to call this pyro. Didn't mean to do that. There we go. And to set us up, we're going to drop the pyro thing into our material. Great. Now we're going to go to the material editor. Now the first thing that we know that we want is we're going to manipulate the emission field. And uh, what we need to do is get the attribute that we know is in this is in this pyro sim um, and plug it in. So that means we're going to have to use something called um, extract. And that's it. Extract texture extract. And if you click on this and you go to property name and click on this pick picker, it's going to give you all the options that we have. So we could just be cheap here and just go temperature, and then we plug temperature into emission and it doesn't really look like a lot. Now, in this case, we're just emitting things. This thing doesn't have like a passive color. So I'm gonna turn the albedo down. Won't see any difference because it's plugged in right now. Now, what's happening is these values are too high um, and we haven't set a ramp. So the next thing that we're gonna do is make a gradient. And we're gonna drop that in. What we're going to say, so the very first thing that we need to do is figure out the range of these values. They're going to be between zero and something. If we assume that they're between zero and one, we're probably going to be wrong. So this side is zero, this side is one, as you can see by these numbers. So if I go here and I say, all right, you're actually, what am I doing? If I say you're actually black, there's a little bit of a fade, but really not much at all. So what happens if we go up to 10? We actually move this this way. We're getting a bit of a fade off, so that's pretty cool. And if we go to 20, what happens? Get more of a fade off, but we're still, we still have some white. So my guess is it's somewhere around here. We, we are guesstimating, but it's not the end of the world because we can just change things as we see fit. Now, um, the colors that we saw 
when we were over here. If we jump back, uh, there we are. We saw that basically it's white, yellow, orange, black. So let's just throw those down. White, and then we're gonna go yellow. And then we're gonna go orange. And then black. And let's have a quick look at what the gradient looked like. So they were kind of in this top half. All right, so let's move this over here. This goes over here. Now we're not seeing the yellow and we're not seeing the white. So let's just go the other way for a second. And we will, oops, wrong one. There we go. It's looking a bit healthier. All right, we're using about half of it. So I'm gonna change it to zero to 10. Let's get that point back that I lost. Zero to 10, and then at this point we're just playing. So you're gonna go white, yellow, orange, and then maybe you want the black to come in sooner or, you know, do whatever you think looks good really is, is, the, is the only criteria here. Um, all right, and you can do you can do crazy things if you want to. Like you can come over here and you could crank this past one, so you could say, "All right, I want I want the core to be super hot," and then we could try the same kind of thing over here, and we could go, "All right, two, two, one, something like that." Um, might be too much, but you get the idea. At this point, you're just going to tinker. I guess is what I'm trying to say, and you can play with this to your heart's content. So I'm not really going to do that um we could start throwing reds in there or whatever which i think is what i did earlier and that ladies and gents is pretty much it um yeah if you have any questions let me know but that in essence is is what we want to do so if, if you want to be sort of more technically correct you're like okay the the you know, we had an emission ramp and we had, uh, sorry, we had a temperature ramp and we had a heat ramp and the heat was technically going into the emission. And then I guess this was like a density multiplier. So we could do that right now while we're talking about it, we can go, sorry, I'm not sure what happened there. So we can go extract property. And instead of using temperature, we can say heat. We can, well, why don't we just steal this? There we go. And that doesn't work at all. So we're going to unplug that. We're going to say texture gradient. We're going to plug this guy in. Sorry. There we go. And we're going to plug that into a mission. So you've lost everything. Uh, we're just going to go through the same drill one more time. So our last one was 10. So we'll make the bottom end black, the top end white. Let's find some kind of balance that we like. Randomly, it seems to be sort of four strange number but okay whatever so we'll say this is four and what do we say yellow and orange and there we go so i don't see any of the white so it might even be three i'm going to keep moving this until i see something wrong one so around here, so zero to three, I suppose. 32, not quite, three. All right, and then again, you just play with this until it looks like something that you think looks like fire. Ugh. Sorry, my mouse is going, my, my Wacom's going a bit bananas. Um, there we go. Let's go back over here. All right, and then and then just play. Like I don't have a simulation to play you because I just ex exported that one frame, but that's kind of it. And then uh, this, I guess in this case, we wouldn't be doing a color gradient this time. We would just be doing black to white. And what did we say our range was 10? So here we're gonna say 10, make another point. And then this first one will be black go and we'll plug this in here and then we'll plug that into our density multiplier I suppose there you go and what it's done is got is it's uh, multiplied the density based on whatever was happening with the temperature because that's what we did here so as things cooled off it gets thinner because we've said thinner 
and then we've just multiplied that into our density over here. So I hope that made sense and is a little bit helpful. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments, but I'll save out this project and those two, uh, these two containers for you, and then you can take a quick look and see if any of it makes sense. All right, I hope that helped, bye.